And so this is the most common type of cancer in men and second most frequent cause of cancer-related deaths in men, okay? One in six men will develop some sort of prostate cancer in the future. If you live long enough and you have a prostate, you might, you're likely going to get prostate cancer. So that's not an issue. The issue is, are you going to get the type that will kill you? And as a practitioner who spends a lot of time with patients with prostate cancer, I will tell you this. I'm not trying to look for prostate cancer or prostate cancer. I'm trying to look only for the type of prostate cancer that can kill you, that if we get it early enough and we treat it early, it can save your life for prostate cancer. Okay. So again, so there's these lower grade types of prostate cancer that I don't really care to find. And those are, I hate to find because now is like the C word, right? Only the type that can be life-threatening is the type that I'm willing to find. So I write about these things and how to go about that on drgeo.com, which I urge you, if you're serious about aging better with, uh, with age, <laughs> get being better with age, um, to join my newsletter, because I think that um, you're going to really like a lot of the information that I uh, send to my subscribers at drgeo.com. GEO.com. Write a lot about this. In any event, here we go. So about 220 men, 20,000 men get diagnosed yearly in the US, about 32 do succumb for it, uh, succumb from it. Um, long end of this is that the United States Preventative Task Force in 2012 issued uh, the use of PSA, uh, letter grade D, which means that it should not be used. But then in 2013, it was now a letter, letter grade C, suggesting that this is um, PSA used in screening for prostate cancer is a conversation to have with the patient, doctor patient, and it's a mutual decision that one would make. I will tell you that PSA is a D is a very good biomarker that we want to have. Before the advent of the PSA, so the PSA test uh, commercially became available in 1990, 1989. Before the PSA test, 40% of men who came in with prostate cancer had already advanced prostate cancer. Okay, 40% of men. That's in 19, so that study is from like 2005. Fast forward to um, 2020, only 4% of men who present with prostate cancer have advanced prostate cancer. So it went down from before the PSA test of, for developing advanced prostate cancer, or at least get uh, for presenting with advanced prostate cancer from 40% before the 1990s to 4% in uh, the 2000s. So there is value. The problem is that it's been overused, abused, and misused. So with any elevation biopsies, so excess unnecessary biopsies, excess unnecessary treatment for prostate cancer. So it, it became a problem. So it's a matter of using it, of using the PSA test properly, not, not um, prompting uh, the scenario of a biopsy uh, from, from a PSA when uh, just from one value, okay? Here's a 2018 report that I think would be good for you to, um, to see. Um, 2018 uh, reported that there is adequate evidence from randomized clinical trial document that PSA-based screening in men aged 55 to 69 might prevent approximately only 1.3 deaths from prostate cancer over approximately 13 years for every thousand men screened. So for every thousand men screened, 
one can be prevented from the use of this PSA test. Okay, there's two ways to look at this. One is, oh my God, this PSA test is a complete and utter disaster. This thing doesn't work. You mean only one person can, you can prevent one death from every thousand of them screened? That's, this thing has no value. The other way of looking at it is like, hmm, what if you're that one? What if you are that one out of a thousand? Wouldn't you want to prevent dying from prostate cancer? Right? So that's how I look at it. Um, I, I, I look at the numbers and I look at the probabilities. It, it's almost like, again, I, something that's relevant. And current is COVID, right? So very few people die from COVID-19, certainly now with the Omicron is new virus, but very few people die from it. But even during the Alpha and the Delta, most that were very sick, unfortunately, were the dying, the ones that were dying from uh, COVID uh, and unhealthy. Um, and so the numbers kept saying, well, there's a low probability. Well, what if that number is you? or your family member that you love. I have an obese mom. Thank goodness she's fine. And she's 85. Um, if it would have been my mom, I would not have been happy with that, right? So PSA, useful, is valuable, depending on how you use it. That's the takeaway from me. And, and there are other tests to use that are even better these days um, to use them beyond PSA. Hold on one second, because I am stuck here. I, it doesn't seem like, uh... sorry, hold on. Oh, there we go, sorry. Actually, my screen is not moving. Give me one second here, guys, so sorry. There you go. Okay, it's localized prostate cancer. So low risk is anything below a PSA of 10 and the biopsy is six. Okay, that's low risk. Intermediate risk is a, bi a PSA of between 10 and 20 uh, and a Gleason score of about seven and high risk is a PSA higher than 20 and a Gleason score of eight, eight or higher. Uh, how about recurrence? So recurrence, so What's recurrence? Prostate cancer recurrence is when you get treated for prostate cancer and then the PSA rises again, right? Um, so you get treated, you get a prostatectomy, all of a sudden you get it back. That happens about 30% of the times after treatment. So after a prostatectomy or radiation, about a third of patients will develop recurrent marked by a rising in PSA. Men with recurrent prostate cancer are greater of increased risk of metastasis and premature death, although hormonal therapies may extend survival in some cases, there is no curative treatment. Here's how that works. And, and I see a lot of, and I would say a bulk of my patients have a recurrence of PSA. Natural approaches, diet, the right botanicals and exercise and good sleep is medicine. And these guys tend to live well. So, and, and, and not die from prostate cancer on average. The more you do, the better you'll do. PSA recurrence does not equate to mortality from prostate cancer, okay? So just because a PSA uh, recurs does not mean that one will die from prostate cancer. Oftentimes they die from other causes. So in my practice, um, we have protocols, uh, lifestyle and natural protocols that are uh, the primary intervention for many of the patients. Sometimes they are in hormone therapy and sometimes they're not, where not only do they reduce their risk of dying from prostate cancer, but, but they reduce, reduce the risk of dying from all cause mortality. So oftentimes they're in better health, overall health than before their diagnosis. This is why prostate cancer in my eyes is 
or can be a blessing from the sky. It is an opportunity. Most men do not live a healthy life until they get diagnosed with something. That something oftentimes is prostate cancer, and then they're able to live longer and better as a result of this diagnosis and despite of this diagnosis. So prostate cancer, PSA recurrence, to me, no problem. Let's get to work. <music>